Oh, I'm Kaori Buran. <laughs> it's very nice to be here. And uh, so today I would like to talk about Be Connected. And uh, what does being connected mean to you? Maybe that's talking to a friend in Paris using Skype or finding out about what your high school friend's doing on the Facebook or uh, checking the latest news on the Twitter. And that could be. But today, I'd like to talk about how people are being connected to nature around us. And uh, we can learn that from the people um, who has to, who, require, who are required to connect it to the nature in order to do their job. So this is a great example of the person who has to be connected to the nature around her in order to do her work. Um, this is an ama diver from Heguda Island. Uh, and uh, we made a documentary called Where the Sea Whistle Echoes. And uh, sea whistle is the breathing method the ama diver use. Please take a look at the video. So um, those ama divers are required to be physically str strong. She has to dive for four hours a day, and she probably dives about 10 meters. And the uh, oldest ama on Hegura Island is actually 92 years old, and she still dives every day. That's pretty amazing. But um, their requirement to do the job is not just physical strength. They have to understand how the current is moving today, or the temperature of the water, or where she can find the shellfish. So they have to be well connected to the nature around her. And that's, um, that's quite different from how we work in the city environment, because we have to understand what the client wants from the email they send or how your boss is feeling by small chat you have in the morning. But for her, it's um, the environment around her that she is required to understand. So do we not need to understand the nature if you live in a city? Last year, uh, we created a documentary called uh, four se uh, seasons, book of seasons, sorry, uh, in Kanazawa City. And uh, I'm from Kanazawa City, so I thought I knew the city very well, but to understand the city from the uh, different point of view, I saw my hometown in a different light. So this is uh, Kagayuzen. Uh, in order for them to paint the flowers or birds, they have to observe it very carefully. And this is the Japanese-style umbrella. And because the snow in Hokuriku, where Kanazawa is, is uh, they have very wet, heavy snow. So the shape of the umbrella is quite different from the other area. And this is the uh, 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 fish fly. And they have, they have like over 500 different kinds, so the fishermen can choose depending on the water and the temperature or the weather of the day. And this is the uh, kaga vegetable that they've been uh, preserving for many, many years. And this is uh, uh, Kenrokuen Garden, one of the most famous gardens in Kanazawa. And uh, to protect the trees, uh, again, the uh, snow is very heavy in that area, so they have to have the rope to hold the branches. So even in a city environment, you receive lots of benefits from the nature, and your everyday life has been actually shaped by the nature around you. And uh, at the United Nations University where I work, uh, we've been creating the web magazine called Our World 2.0. And uh, 
and we've been introducing um, ideas that to shape better uh, future. Uh, our world 2.0, the name suggests that maybe we need a, a second uh, operating system for the world. And uh, for me, uh, I've been creating documentary about Satoyama and Satoumi. And probably many of you heard the Satoyama and Satoumi. This is the uh, very typical, uh, typical or the uh, well-shown picture of Satoyama, that you have secondary forest in the background, and you have the rice paddies and the vegetable gardens, and uh, it's very small, but you can see the person working in the ground. So it is not just about the nature, but how people uh, coexist uh, in a harmonious way with the nature and how well they use the uh, resources that you can receive. And it's not, Satoyama is not about only in Japan, that you can find in many different countries actually. So we went to film uh, the example in India. Here, people make coffee, in Japan, people make rice, and there are small differences because the nature is different in, the, uh, in different areas, but still, there are uh, similar concepts. And we also start making film about Satoumi, which is similar concept as um, Satoyama, but again, uh, people live in the coastline, uh, well managing the resources and uh, living in the um, ocean with the harmony. So we visit many different places in Japan to see, um, understand better how people in Japan being living with the ocean environment. And uh, of course, many of you know that the Tohoku area is one of the most important uh, uh, fishing communities in Japan. So we really thought that the, we need to uh, go there and uh, uh, film uh, how they're gonna rebuild the uh, fishing port. So we went to Kesenuma from uh, 11th to 14th of April. こういう静かな海も海だしね。本当に優しい海じゃないですか。本当にこう天国のようなところなんですよ。でもね、あ、ああいう波が来るってことをこれ現実ですよね。だからそれそういうものとやっぱり付き合っていかなきゃいけないって